Good afternoon to everyone. We are going to continue now with our teaching on Shamata. Uh, but before we do this, please, everybody, make an aspiration of Bodhicitta. So yesterday we talked about the three stages of listening, contemplating and practicing or meditating and then this morning we uh, went through the preliminary stage or the first stage of our meditation session and also began with the core part of our Shamata meditation practice. So this afternoon we're going to continue with this. So uh, this morning um, we did uh, some brief uh, practice um, on the Shamata meditation method whereby the mind observes the mind and so we had a brief experience of this and we're going to continue talking about this now. So when we talk about the mind observing the mind or the mind observing itself, we're really talking about the mind having the capacity to directly experience itself. So just as the mind is able to perceive form and sights in the external world and is able to uh, experience or perceive sounds as well, so too is it able to directly experience itself. So when we use the word observe, we're not referring to anything here other than the mind directly experiencing itself. And its ability to do this is uh, a characteristic or the characteristic of the mind. 
Tani Taguna not so simti Kangna Yogorizi, not so legal the new Lapagana Laiorita, Yangana Layo, Poaganala, Kambagana Laiorite, Sim the Kang Laiorizina, the name Sim Tuna Garting at so Tini Liti Nanla, Tini Sim Korang Latin Nesa, Tini Sachanda Potini Yona, or Tenita Yangwila Yogore Mato Bazamba or Mares. So in terms of uh, locating uh, the residence of our mind in our body, it, does it reside in our brain? Does it resi reside in our heart? Does it reside in our feet or in our stomach? Well, if we had to designate a residence or a place of residence for the mind within the body, then we would designate it as the, um, our heart, the center of our heart. Then you share tongue, not so sim tana and chasson, then you sim coron zig me pazre, then you zig me pazi in sarti, then you coron la bagana la yota, yangana la yota, canlao, de la yos in it is a guna, then is it of gumare, yena, then you got so gum japi necumna, then you gumbi necumna, then it a yang la gumna, then duker is it, then you gum silent, then you are it in a yang women bagarian maze in it, then you save jang the chocolate, share tongue, coron then in tasting the thing. Also, Simziate, the Ne Pena Murtaoshi, the Nihyang Zerati, Kambataoshi, Nihyanga Villa Tabar de Orzina, De Yimbingi Bat, your marriage. Did you look under song song a Pukoma song? Shertanga so the Nihyang or Gumbi Nekumna, the Nisim Yang Villa Gumna and Dukare, the Nisher, the Nita Shertan Quarantini, Simziate, the Nyanga Nala, your Mato, Jambala, me, Nyana Tata La Yozina, the Nipa, your marriage. So, however, the mind, as we know, is formless. It doesn't have any form. So, for this reason, as we uh, talked about this morning, it's in general not possible for us to locate where the mind exists in our body, in a concrete place. It's not possible to say that the brain, the mind exists in our brain or at our heart. However, uh, in terms of meditation practice, uh, we can meditate on the mind um, as if it resides in the center of our heart. It is possible for us to do this in meditation. It is appropriate for us to do this in uh, the concrete context of meditation. However, this is not saying that this is where the heart necessarily resides. <laughs> Gubai or it gubat all and the gumna, and the gum jabna, tongotola, mena, and the gumna, and the la gubai or it. So even though in reality the our minds don't uh, exist or reside in the center of our hearts, in the context of meditation, when we observe our mind as if it did reside in the center of our heart, then this has a particular. Um, power or effect, efficacy in the context of our meditation practice. Then if you're talking about something like that, like gum jabi ne kamna, then if harke gum jira da, yang jamba chi yeke gum bada ota, then if so then if niang nang la, then if niang aso tanong sya pado metok pama da o shini, then nang la gum ken, then if yang yore si sang nang la. So in other forms of Vajrayana meditation practice, such as deity meditation, idam meditation, or where we visualize letters and uh, syllables, in the context of these meditation techniques, it's quite common to meditate, to visualize our heart in the form of a lotus flower. <laughs> Debo Mundig Zink and Tinti Yosons, Tina, Tikung Maring, as of any young gum, Tinni Tinang Latini gum, Tinti Machina, Shetanti Journey Gum Sir La Pena, as of Pardu Tudur, the Sogo Tinin Samik Journey Ganala, Tinni Yang Gum Gumari Shetan, Tinni Sim Ganala Nantokan, Mipashini Dena Tindrixa Yores. So today uh, or this morning uh, during our question time, uh, one student mentioned that uh, she found it a little uncomfortable during meditation to meditate on the mind as residing in the heart. 
and uh, that's um, that's uh, not a big problem insofar as shamatha meditation is concerned. There are a lot of different methods where we don't um, uh, me- we don't observe our mind as if it resided in our heart. In fact, in terms of the thirteen different shamatha meditation methods in the Book of the Dead, these are formless meditation methods where we essentially rest in a still state of no thought and. And in this situation, the mind is not uh, observed or meditated on as if it existed in a uh, concrete part of the body. So it is um yeah mm-hmm. so if you it is okay to meditate um, to uh, meditate on the mind as if it resided in the center of the heart it's also okay if we um, don't meditate in this way too mm. Mm-hmm. Um, in the uh, in Vajrayana practice, there are also meditation techniques where we simply focus our attention on the uh, center of the um, channels at uh, the center of our heart and focus our um, attention in this way. So in terms of so in, in, in general, it is uh, fine if we practice um, meditating on our mind at the center of our heart. In the Vajrayana tradition, this spot, the center of our heart, is regarded as an important place. This particular shamatha meditation practice that we're looking at is a very, um, is a very uh, simple, it's a very um, straightforward practice. And so for this reason, there is not a lot of complexity involved in um, concentrating on different channels or anything like this. So there are three ways that we can practice that are all okay, they're all acceptable. Uh, The first one is where we uh, meditate um, on our um, observing our minds um, as if our minds exist in our heart, actually in our heart. The uh, second way is where we um, uh, meditate on our mind as existing at the point at the center of our heart, but not actually in our heart. 
Um, so the second one, sorry, is simply just focusing at the point at the center of the, uh, of the heart. And this is not focusing on the mind as residing at this point. Sometimes there are uh, different, uh, different objects or different things that we focus on at this point, but it is simply concentrating the attention at this point. And then the third possible way is uh, when we don't, we neither focus on the mind as um, existing in the heart or at the center of our heart, concentrating our attention here, but simply uh, rest in a state free of thought. <laughs> Jamada Mambo, then in Namto Yungariti, Natini, Namto Korangatini, Yungsati, Gani Yungari, Natini, Ganjigotone, Yungari, Natini, Koranga Motila, Moti Tony Parangor, then Mo Sim Gumotila Tini, then in Negori. So uh, resting um, in this place, uh, all kinds of, we find that all kinds of thoughts arise. The Gunda Kempungaya Pokomaso. <coughs> so from this um, basic, um, from the all-encompassing consciousness, many thoughts arise, and uh, we simply rest in this state in observing this uh, all-encompassing consciousness. It's also possible for us during meditation to um, observe uh, the thoughts arising as if the place from which they were arising um, is our hearts, our mind residing at the heart or the point at the center of our heart. Uh, this is essentially the same thing. <laughs> So it's uh, not necessary for us to be uh, looking to whether the, where the thoughts are arising from, from our brain or from here or from there, simply um, to um, look at the thought movement itself and rest there is sufficient. So it's not necessary for us to be searching for the mind or for a place to rest the mind, for us to have an idea of a mind and a place where it is rested, simply to uh, rest in the mind itself, this is enough. <laughs> So um, so uh, it is fine to uh, let the mind rest on its own bed or in its own bed. So in terms of where this uh, bed of the heart is, it's okay if we say that it is um, in the heart or at the point of the heart. 
It's okay if we say that the essence of the heart is the all-encompassing consciousness. The important thing is that we uh, rest observing the mind, um, whether it be in the heart or at the point of the middle of our heart, in a state where we give rise to no thought. So just resting like this, observing the essence of the mind is essentially our method. There is no need for us to, um, to apply any more complicated methods than this. This is essentially the method that we use for resting the mind. Chela <laughs> So our minds are always giving rise to thoughts and um, this state of our mind always in a state of giving rise to thought movement is just like uh, when light uh, shines on water and produces a glimmering movement. This is just like the state of our minds, that uh, the state that our minds are usually in, a state that is uh, never still, always moving. So we can imagine if a stream of light was coming through the window and it was reflecting off a small pond, if there was a little bit of wind as well, then this would produce a glimmering movement and we could see the dancing of a lot of light. And this is just what our minds are usually like in a state of continually giving rise to thought. Um, big thoughts, small thoughts, subtle thoughts, a continuous um, glimmering array of thought movement. So given that our minds are giving thoughts, uh, giving rise to thoughts in this manner, trying to stop them or to block them in um, some direct way would not be successful. We wouldn't be able to achieve this. However, if it were possible for us, say, just like with the example of um, uh, glimmering movements of water on a lake surface, if we were to remove the element of the wind, then the lake surface would immediately come into a state of stillness. So this is the approach that needs to be taken. So 
So by resting in a state of stillness, giving rise to no thought movement whatsoever, then this is the same as removing the wind so that the water itself comes, the water face comes to a state of stillness. So we remain or we rest in this state. So there's a lot that more the complicated uh, things that can be said about this, but really the main point is uh, that which we spoke about earlier, and that is observing the essence of the mind directly and resting in this state. Within the nine methods of bringing the mind to rest, there are a couple among uh, there are several of these methods that we can also bring to use in this meditation context. So it's uh, not necessary for us at this point to apply all nine of the methods for bringing the mind to rest. However, the first three of these methods um, can be uh, used by us productively. The first of the nine methods is that of placement. And um, by placement, we mean placing the mind upon the object on which it is concentrating or focusing. Tanipenangatarita <laughs> So in the context of our meditation, placement would be would refer to um, when our thoughts progressively become less and fewer till finally we reach um, zero point, resting at this point zero in an unmoving way for one minute or two minutes or for however long we are able to rest here. This is placement of the mind. <laughs> The <laughs> So the reason for why we refer to this um, state as zero or point zero we talked about before, from this um, basic point of zero, um, larger or more coarser thoughts that arise, we can imagine as large integers such as one or two or three up to nine, Smaller and more subtle thoughts we can imagine as um, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, up to 0.9. In any case, uh, the state where we give rise to no thoughts whatsoever, where whether big in nature or subtle in nature, is 0 0.0 itself. <laughs> Then 
yinayang teni korang bejana ta nga chu thuk thoni sha yona thuk thok thuk de la yang teni cha chu tin di sum yo go cha chu sum yo re ji thuk de la thuk de kang ni ji na thuk de korang thuk chu bu ma to ba ti to la thuk cha chu thuk cha ni thuk cha sum yang na nga tu dun ja la so tin di ang tang chi jang yo ma re thuk de korang thuk jang ba re ji de cha chu chi re so in simply observing the mind and and giving rise to no thought resting in this state of point zero has as we talked about this morning three characteristics so even though it is a state of um, no discursive thought we can speak of it as if it possesses three characteristics the first being that zero this point zero um, is a state of giving rise to no numbers, other, there are no numbers, whether small decimal points, point zero, point two, uh, point zero, point one, zero, point two, or larger integers, one, two, three, four, none of these exist at zero. There is nothing at zero except for itself zero. So this is the first characteristic. <laughs> The second characteristic is even though we just said that um, zero is not um, and uh, is is a um, a state where there are no integers, larger integers or smaller decimal numbers. This is not to say that it is not a number itself or that it is nothing in itself. Um, that is when we um, put zero in front of the other numbers, one, two, three, four, five, etc. It becomes um, a numeral in this context. So it's uh, not correct to say that zero is nothing. Then you catch us in the middle, then you bear not two day, Angjanganani, then you chashi, Angjang chashi, Tama, Angjang Zerita, Chatanga, Angjang Zerita, Yana, the chashi, Angjang Zerina, Jung Suda, Fushu Zero. And the third characteristic of zero is that it is uh, neither a positive integer or a negative in integer. It is precisely in the very middle of both of these. So this is the third characteristic. So resting in this state or this zero point, a state where no thoughts are uh, arising, simply resting in this state and observing the mind is um, abiding in this state of zero. So so the first characteristic is that uh, in resting our mind in this way, uh, it is a state of no thought. So even subtle thoughts, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, are not present in this state. Not 
tani gyar sunga ta ngayang jaga mundu wa tani korang ngayang tani saru saru tani nyam sim nyong ji yore ji tani te te pe na nga cho thik te yang thik te yang tani jiang me pa zma re korang chik jab lo la bi sang na tani ton ton gari te ten da bo re te ni da bo re and in terms of the second characteristic of uh, this zero point, as we just said, even though zero is a state or where no integers or, um, are present, nevertheless it isn't nothing. It's not correct to say that zero is nothing in itself. When put in place with the other integers, it takes its um, function in this context. And so too does um, uh, does this zero point have its own function. Um, the all-encompassing uh, conscious itself is clearly awake, it is lucidly awake, it is able to uh, lucidly and clearly experience itself. And in terms of the third characteristic, as we just mentioned, that uh, zero is um, a place right in the center um, of positive integers and negative integers. It's not possible to say that it is positive or negative. It is neither one or the other. So too, um, the state of resting at zero point is one that we are able to experience and to understand in an experiential way. How it, however, it is not possible for us to express in language uh, the uh, nature of this state. Of course, um, speaking about resting the mind at zero point or in a state of zero is not a traditional way of uh, describing um, how to rest our mind. It's a way that I uh, use to convey the meaning in an easily understandable way. It's not a traditional oh, yeah. So by bringing our minds to rest on this point of zero, and uh, resting in this state, abiding in this state, then this is uh, what we refer to as the first of the nine methods of bringing the mind to rest, that of placement or placing the mind. When we first start out with our meditation practice, actually resting at this point for any length of time is uh, very difficult. Very rapidly, our minds give rise to new thought activity. So it's quite difficult for us to rest in this state for any more than a couple of minutes. So um, that's so when we find ourselves in this situation, we need to enter into struggle with our thoughts. And this, and this process of entering into uh, struggle or battle against our thoughts has four stages to it. 
তিনি আছো তাম্বু গুম জাপি নি হেকম না তিনি মসংমা তো সেম গা তিনি চাবদুক সি গো গো রে তো সেম নাংলা চাবদুক জি গো জি তি চাবদুক তো কে না তিনি ও তা আমি গুম জাপি নি হেকম না তাম্বু তা নাম তো মাম্বু মাম্বু হা লি বা মাম্বু কে রে ইনা ইন দাম তিনি নাম তো তে সাম চুপ মেপা সি নি কুসল থাপ নি থাপ সুপ সি নি নারং গেয়ারকা লিঙ্গো সামা তি সেম নাংলা চাবদুক তো তাম্বু গো রে So the first thing that we need to do prior to beginning meditation is be mentally prepared for what we are going to experience. And so the first thing that we need to be mentally prepared in respect of is that by practicing meditation to begin with our minds are going to be full of thought activity that we our minds are going to be constantly giving rise to thought however in respect of this thought activity we need to adopt an attitude of uh, firm resolution to eliminate these thoughts and to achieve vic- victory over them tani tambu nga chu tani gum japi gum japa la thopi ne kam na kan dis re jena te nam to hale ba mam bo te jilla ki ni o তিনি আজ নাম তো তিনি শেরতং নাম তো তিনি রামদাত লেখি থানা দোচক জেরদং তুম নারগের খুঁছো তিনি নিউম বাগা নাম তো মাম্বো মাম্বো তিনি কে রে তি কাপস So when we uh, first start out with our meditation process uh, our meditation practice our minds are full of discursive discursive um uh mental activity um thoughts of an ordinary nature thoughts that uh um afflictive thoughts thoughts uh, characterized by hatred and anger and by desire uh we give rise to a great amount of thought activity of this nature tani ti kap sanga to chorwa ka nazun jongore zena parche ngarang gum maji pine kebli ngarang gum japi ne kebla nam to mambo rendo undu ngarang gum japi jana nam to chimung la do undu saban ro tindi na wa yungore And at this time it's very common for us to feel that in fact when we sit down to meditation we have much more discursive mental activity than we do in our normal everyday life. Te ti jimsen jin mi mambu zuk chisam kare zina o ta ngarang la gum ta ngarang limdir yo samare ngarang dikba chimbo yin sare ngarang tin dikdup chimbo yin sare ni gum jam na ngarang la gum la tin limdir yo samare ta ngarang gum jam ki par yik jo ngaro gum jam na rewa yo samari tele ngaro jamban donban randon te chi tindi da shina lojong da shina gasare samne teni gum jaga te ti kap satni para ik jankeng ga teni mo tindi mambu yore and there are many students who actually abandon meditation practice at this point feeling that they are not um they don't have an a karmic affinity with meditation practice that they in fact for whatever reason be a be it a karmic obstacle or their own defilement that this is um preventing them from um experiencing good meditation practice and so many students abandon meditation thinking that um they will um suffice themselves with recitation mantra recitation or study of the dharma the, the teachings they give up essentially meditation deni nga so mi mambo zuk deni gum japi ne kam na nga so chama tindi yamba da ha go ya mare ze khoran ka sam na nga rang tindi re ma to ba jamba tindi yeng mare sam tindi sam kare ta de mare nga so chama ma chama tindi re ze chama te tangbu nga so gum japi ne kam na tindi chik pare tindi na to hali ba mambo yung kare but many people don't know uh when they set out with um set out to learn meditation that they are that everyone actually is in the same boat that everyone experiences a great deal of mental um thought activity in the same way and that they are not the only ones then in nam to tambo ko ni gum ja pi ne kam na nam to chi ja me pa ze na tin te ngun ni jeng tan mai bare se ten tha mai ba jeng tan mai bare se tambo gum ja pi ne kam na nam to mambo yo na then it is jeng tan re ji tin se lai na tin ji re in fact to sit down to meditation for the first time and not to give rise to any thoughts whatsoever would be extremely abnormal um <laughs> the normal situation is to experience a great deal of thought activity then in me mambo zuk khoran so tin ni gum jap na tambu ni tin ni gum jap ti ne kam na tin ni nam tok men kan tin ni ke bo tin ni yak bo zin sa re sam ni tin ni kho so re wa chim bo tin ni jap yo re tin ni Marizi. 
Of course, some people think that uh, beginning with meditation, they'll sit down, everything will come along well, they'll have a great, happy and pleasant feeling, but in fact, this isn't how it works. ตินิมังบุยงกดวาสิตินดาวสกเปนาตินิเปนาญานาลาตินิปุกชงชงซามาตินิยาจิอ่าดิมุงชินดามาริมินซัลตินากงดวาออตินชาปินิกมนาติน
তিনি জাম্বাজে গেছে জাম্বি মাপজি পাজি জে জে না মেপা রে সোনা তিনি জে জে গে খরা তি সেম কালা মাপজি নে সারু ইপা তেলা তিনি জাম্বাজে গে So the first of these mindfulness is um that um ability to keep in mind to keep in our minds whatever it is that we are meditating on so whether it be impermanence or bodhicitta to almost as if take a photo of uh that which it is that we are keeping in our mind and to not forget it to clearly be mindful of it is what we ref- what we mean with mindfulness deni karti chambat me sona deni ngatsu sem kanala gum yabni tondak ngatsu sem kanala gum yopati deni meni me pachang dogori te jit dogori jit ni me pachang dogori deni me pachak sona deni ngatsu gum te ngatsu sem te gum maim bari dogori Without mindfulness we find that the um focus of our the object of our my, of our meditation is lost we forget it and therefore our minds are no longer um in meditation or folk or focused on meditation Then in also tari jani tani gom simla tani jani gom sanda pote dizina jamba te kala ze go rizina tani ngatsu kongla chachuk sum dang damba ga sim speaking about would be a mind that is um that would be ha- having in our mind the three characteristics of uh point zero that we spoke about before or the clearness and lucidity of the mind observing the mind that we mentioned as well and uh clearly uh being aware of this state and abiding in this awareness is what we refer to as uh mindfulness তিনি চাম্বাতে আছো মাপজি পা সে নে সেম গানে তিনি জিত তানে তে আছো গুমিয়াতে তিনি মাপজি পা সে নে তিনি তি নালা সেম গানালা তাকবর খরা সেম গানালা শের চিক গে তে তে তেস্তর চিক পা তেলা তে সেম গানালা শের জি না সেম গানালা মেপা মারে পা ও পে না আছো জাঙ গানালা তিনি দাওয়া গজিন তে শের ইউ না তিনি জাঙ গানালা দাওয়া গজিন তে তাকবর ইউ না তিনি তে খরা সেম গানালা তিনি চাম্বা গুনে খরা ইউ পানা পড়ে তিনি সেম জাঙ্গা দাবা তে ফার মে পারে সোনা তিনি চাম্পা মে নি ফার জিত সঙ্গে so the state of um being mindful or mindfulness is when we um uh, abide in this um abide in that the gol um gola tik yang ya sona chok pezri ta to pezri na beni go ting mon la deni che kha ze che ze song song ডিটেশন <laughs> um go from our mind we don't allow it to pass from our mind we keep it always in mind so just like when the moon it light is reflecting on the surface of a pond so long as the moon is there we can see the reflection however if the moon disappears then we no longer see the reflection in any any more and this would be similar to a situation where we lose mindfulness and our um we uh, our awareness or our, our mindfulness of our meditation is lost so uh, this is a metaphor that we can use to understand mindfulness then it jamba chikti pe yang hale pa kar chimbo chikti ka rizna ti shivjin je gyo re and uh, the second important um Uh, the second important uh, aside from mindfulness the uh, second important thing we need to bear in mind is awareness uh, being aware then shivjanti gandhi rizina ta ngarang gomte teni nantok mepa rin duta mundu yana nantok ke ndu ta mundu 
So when this is um, uh, when our mind is clearly cognizant of its state, so whether or not it is in a state of mindfulness or whether it is passed from a state of mindfulness, whether it is in a state of giving rise to thought or not giving rise to thought, this is uh, not um, achieved through uh, directly discursively asking questions of the mind, rather it is an experiential awareness um, of the state that the mind is in. So we can liken these two mindfulness and awareness to watchmen, uh, military watchmen. So um, watch persons in terms of people who are on watch, people who are keeping on a keeping lookout, they need to do this from afar, perhaps from mountains outside the city. If they are on the lookout for enemies, they wouldn't do this by going directly into the city and trying to be on the lookout from here. So we can liken this um, um, being aware or being watchful or watching uh, from afar to keeping an eye on the state of um, the situation that we are in while keeping our gaze fixed in front of us. It is possible for us to be aware of what is happening in our midst through our peripheral vision. So without turning our head and looking to the left and turning our head and looking to the right, it's still possible by looking ahead in front of us to know what is happening in our immediate environment. And so this is an example that we can use to um, get a better idea idea of what we mean by mindfulness and awareness essentially um, the com- combining this these two we are able to um, be aware of the state that our mind is in whether it is resting or not whether it is giving rise to thought or not um, we don't do this by discursively asking questions directly about the state of our mind um, this kind of awareness and mindfulness is something that is done um, or achieved in an experiential way. So by applying awareness, it is uh, possible for us to know whether our minds are still placed on their object of meditation uh, that we set out with. Um, This awareness enables us to know whether we are still um, meditating on our original object or whether our minds have wandered. So 
Then young as a simti pedang as a simti, debiton la sam lotangayo, yana maum biton la sam lotangayo, tindi yena, tindi as a simti young shir kirioni, young janega tola jani, tindi muntani coron de jugo remato coron muntani on de pati, lo yalo tung mambola sam lotang, maum bala lo yalo tung gis mambola sam lotang, tindi machi. Then he called some shit to the only, the Sasha de la Tari Jerni de Tola Jagore de la Jinjo Zigre, then he seemed to be tap girl, nobody is. So, in um, being aware if we have lost our mindfulness and have given rise to um, thought activity, then we know that this has happened. We know if we are giving rise to thoughts of a certain. Uh, so when we um, observe, when we're aware that we have uh, given rise to thought activity, whether it be a thought to do with something in the past or the present or the future, then in not letting that thought continue to go on into um, the uh, future, in bringing our mind straight back to the immediate place where it should be resting. So by bringing the mind back to our shamatha um, meditation, then this action is what we refer to as repeated placement. And this is the third of the nine methods for bringing the mind to rest. <laughs> Tambung at the Tola, Tramba Tola, Tambung at the Gum Gatola Jernet, and in Montani, near Tomoto, Carmani, Carmasum, Carmajet, near Ottani, Montani, near Tila, the near Semnipitam Nipat in the Ginjos at it is. So the Ginjos and the Tapni Barba Nipa. So uh, when we start out by placing our mind uh, on the object of our Shamata meditation, then in um, uh, resting in this state for one or two minutes or for as long as we can, this um, continual abiding or resting uh, on the original or in the original pa place of placement is what we refer to as uh, continual placement. This um, continual or sustained resting is continual placement. And this is the second of the nine methods for bringing the mind to rest. When we um, uh, become aware that our minds have lost their mindfulness and have given rise to thought activity and we bring our focus once again to our original um, shamatha meditation, then this is repeated placement and this is the third method. <laughs> On a Nanto Mambo Kiri, Yena, Nitela, Tatsuchini, Naranga Yaka, Lingus, and be Semnala, Jabduxia, Te, or Te Chigri, Tini, Tambatan Shivin Nikatere, Titola, Tini, Jinjola, the Njopa La Sopa, Sumri, the Tributing as a Chirish Chasma, the Tributing as a Li Tambopa, Gum Jamkins La San Lotanape, Karchim Bore. So these six points that we've just mentioned are extremely important for people beginning with meditation practice. So the first point, as we mentioned, was being mentally prepared that in engaging in meditation, we will encounter a great deal of thought activity and that in respect of this thought activity, we need to vow to achieve victory. Um, this first attitude or mental preparation is very important. And then uh, the uh, next two things, the importance of mindfulness and awareness in our meditation practice, they are very important too. And then the first three of the nine methods of bringing the mind to rest, placement, continual placement, and repeated placement, these three are also of great use, are uh, indispensable to uh, beginning meditators. And in addition to these six points, there are two further points that are very important and which everyone should bear in mind. And these two methods are... Um, or these two um, these two approaches 
uh, for dispelling obstacles that we might encounter in our meditation practice. Then you purchase chitty cards in an atso gum, gabby neck of natin, cup cups at the nita, nanto halipa, mambo younger at the nin, nanto the mambo halipa, mambo truni, the nita, and in Martini, nanto mepa, the journey in Allah, name Martha Pashini, the journey in Allah, Karmachi Negona, name Martha Batin, nanto halipa, mambo truni, the di younger residini, tela, the name Truat and Gopazigre, the nita, than Truaz, nanto pan Truazigre, then as a purchase chigres. So the first kind of um, obstacle that we might encounter is one where we experience an unusually, um, an unusually uh, large or amount of thought activity or an, an unusually strong amount of thought activity. That is, we find ourselves in a state of continually giving rise to thought. Uh, it's not possible for us to bring ourselves into stillness or calm abiding even for the shortest moment. <laughs> Of course, as we said before, it's you, it's normal uh, when we start out to experience a great deal of thought activity. However, if this continues every day and doesn't abate what uh, in in the slightest, then we might want to consider whether we need to go and get our bodies checked out by a doctor. Then in Mambadin, I saw in a book of Manganala in a room man's in the room man to your Dinton Gore, Salmon Shamanda, the Dimat of Bajamba, a Jalabana la Shalimli, Zinger Commandi, Sontona Yapoyuki Maris, Eo Missita, Hago Maris, and Borkanala, Bormanda, the Nee. Salmon Shaman Tosuna, Lumun or Lumun Tongo Resita, Carti Mamba Latani, Mamba Tizanaka Duzena, Tego Res, Namgin Tizina, Jindrugamaris. Salmon Shimizina? Oh, let's say. And in terms of what kind of doctor would be good for, um, uh, would, be, would be qualified or would be useful to examine us in this context, um, a Tibetan doctor or a Chinese doctor who, was, who is skilled in um, diagnosing illness related to winds and um, other um, uh, functions of the body, this would be the best um, approach. It's uh, uncertain whether um, consulting a Western doctor would um, provide us with any um, useful diagnosis in this situation. Of course, this would only be in a situation where we constantly um, we find ourselves in a state of ongoing um, and especially um, strong thought activity. Um, we shouldn't think that when we sit down to meditation, oh, we're giving rise to um, a lot of thought time for us to go and see the doctor. It's not necessary for us to think like this. <laughs> And so, in fact, there are a couple of relatively um, easy approaches we can take to um, addressing this problem. Uh, one approach we can take is if we're in a building like this with uh, split levels, so a first story or a second story and a third story, it can be advantageous for us when we experience an unusual amount of thought activity to go immediately to a lower level to meditate, such as the first floor or the basement level. <laughs> Another approach we can take is to close the curtains and make the space that we are meditating in a bit darker. 
So um, both of these things can have benefit. And the third thing that we can do that can help is to uh, increase the temperature of the room that we are meditating in if, if, if we're able to do so. Or put on some thicker clothing. If we try all of these approaches and nothing works, then uh, in this situation, the best thing to do is to um, abandon our meditation session for the time being. It's not good for us to force ourselves to continue. And the reason for this is if we do force and compel ourselves to continue in our meditation in this situation, then our mind will uh, become rebellious and um, various consequences will follow. Kap <laughs> The second type of obstacle that we might commonly experience is one where our minds are not giving rise to a lot of thought and perhaps not giving rise to any thought at all. However, they are not in a state of uh, clarity or lucidity. They are dull, we feel drowsy, we might not be falling asleep, but we feel as if we are about to. And so in this dull and drowsy and uh, rather befuddled state, um, this is an obstacle to our um, meditative concentration. There are a few very easy things we can do to uh, remedy this situation. The first would be to splash some cold water on our faces. And if we are meditating in a house or a building where we have the opportunity of going to a higher floor, this would be an option. And increasing the light in the space that we are meditating in can also be useful. So by opening the curtains, essentially doing all the things that are the opposite of what we just spoke about in the previous context. And if it's possible for us to lower the temperature in the space we're meditating in, then this could also be good too. And similarly, if we do all of these things, but um, ultimately to no avail, then again we shouldn't force ourselves to continue in our meditation practice. The thing to do at this point is to take a break.
So th these two extra points, that is these um, two points which address, um, which are remedies for common obstacles that we might encounter in our meditative practice, in addition to the six points that we mentioned just before, together make up eight points that are very useful for um, practitioners beginning with meditation. And in addition to all of these, there is a final point that we need to pay attention to. And this final, um, this final point is um, a method or an approach we can take when we are experiencing a very good state of um, um, shamatha meditation. So we're resting in a state of no thought, we're not sinking, we're not feeling drowsy, we're not feeling dull, we are resting uh, very well in a state of the mind, directly experiencing the mind. In this situation, what we do is um, actively or voluntarily um, uh, interrupt our meditation process, our meditation session or our meditation. <laughs> Of course, some people think this is extremely bizarre. Why would we, in our best meditative state, um, seek to interrupt it? But the reason that uh, we do this is that as um, beginners, it's not possible for us to abide in this um, shamatha um, state for a particularly long period of time. If we don't um, interrupt uh, the meditation ourselves, then before too long it's inevitable that a thought will arise and do it for us. So that is why um, having had a period of good meditative experience, we then um, voluntarily interrupt it or cease it. Of course, some might say, well, if it's us interrupting it or if it's the thought interrupting it, it's still interruption, so what's the difference? The difference between the two is if we voluntarily or if we proactively interrupt um, or cut our med meditation, then we will have done so at a time when our experience is at its best. And for this reason, uh, we will still be feeling very positive and very enthusiastic about meditation and will want to uh, quickly return to it. <laughs> It's the same as we can imagine two good friends getting together over a tea or a coffee to have a conversation. The conversation is uh, coming along excellently. They're having a great time. If this conversation were to be aborted very abruptly, then both of them would go home um, still harboring a feeling of what a great conversation they had had. And if one of them were to call them up on the phone and say, do you want to come out and keep um, chatting tomorrow over a cup, of, a, cup of, a cup of tea, they would feel very enthusiastic and would be very willing to do so. 
Tini te tang drapo ri ngaso lama tini te ngama gum la nyam yung ya bo yung ken so tini gum tang tini ka jibine kem na zangbu zu ko ni ya bu zu ko ni gum tang ka tra na tini lam sang yang gum gum la tro ki yung ga rez and it's the same in respect of uh, meditation this was the experience of uh, highly realized lamas in the past that when we part from our meditation session we should do so um, at a time when our or in good terms um, we should part from our meditation session uh, at a point when our meditation experience has been strong then in sam jagne yang lam sang gum go re ma to ban sam jagne yang ker jagna de gumare tin sam jagne so when we interrupt um, our meditation like this, it's necessary that we immediately return to meditation. So we don't interrupt the meditation and then just leave it. We immediately come back. We immediately return. So so it's um, important that uh, when we um, separate or when we part from meditation that we do on do so on good terms. The opposite of parting on good terms with medita- from meditation is parting on bad terms. And uh, this would be a situation where we are sitting in meditation, where um, there's a lot of thought activity. It's very difficult for us to uh, rest our mind in calmness. And if we were to break our meditation session at this point, when we were um, not having the best meditative experience, then we would not feel a strong sense of desire or inclination to return to our meditation. So it would be the same as uh, two friends who are sitting down to their conversation and um, not having a very agreeable time at all, arguing back and forth. And if they were to uh, go home on uh, in this way, then if one was to call the other up the following day to see if they wanted to come out, they would make excuses and say they didn't have time. Oh, yeah. So these nine points that we've covered just now are really important ones that everyone beginning in their meditation needs to know about. And these nine points or these nine methods probably um, encompass within them um, all the uh, necessary um, tips that we need to know for our meditative practice. So we are going now to continue with the text. So in a state of mindfulness, um, we seek to continue in, uh, um, in our practice without interruption. So similar to complete emptiness, rest right there. Similar to vivid clarity, rest right there. Similar to constant movement, stay right there. Sometimes um, in our meditation practice, we um, experience a state uh, similar to emptiness. It's not necessary for us to concern ourselves, to inquire of the state, whether this is emptiness or not. Simply abiding where we are is sufficient. So, 
And there are other times uh, during our meditation where we experience great clarity, vivid clarity. Again, however, it's not necessary for us to concern ourselves whether this is clarity or not. Simply to rest right there is sufficient. And uh, there are other times in our, um, during our meditation where we begin to give rise to um, a great deal of thoughts. However, being aware that this is happening, the thoughts will um, dissolve or disappear of their own accord. Zenikari, so unmodified, unadulterated, totally bare, whatever occurs, rest right there. So um, whatever um, we state, we discover, whatever we uh, observe in during our meditation, it's not necessary for us to um, be examining or investigating whether it is this way or whether it is that way, way or whether this is the way things should be or not the way things should be. Simply uh, irrespective of what occurs to abide right where we are is sufficient. So sometimes we will find ourselves thought, uh, giving rise to thoughts like, oh, this it's, it's empty or it's clear or it's moving. However, we shouldn't chase after these thoughts. Um, if we do, then they will um, become stronger. So in this situation, we uh, simply uh, rest where we are. And we need to meditate like this um, for a long time. So, uh, moving on then to uh, letting go of comparative analysis and over conceptualization. Here, um, thoughts about whether this is empty or not, whether this is similar to that, whether this is this way or should be that way. Essentially, investigative thoughts and uh, analytic um, effort, this is uh, not what we should do. Re irrespective of whatever thoughts arise or whatever occurs, we simply rest where we are by investigating and analyzing, asking uh, discursive questions of our thoughts. They only become more and stronger in nature. So simply being aware of our thoughts as they are, we rest in this state. And by doing so, naturally, we will return to a state of calm abiding. <laughs> So 
So um, as we were speaking about before, sometimes um, uh, during our meditation, we might find ourselves experiencing dullness. Um, we uh, spoke about before some methods we can take to um, address this situation. So sometimes we might find ourselves uh, giving rise to a lot of subtle thoughts. So not necessarily a large thought movement, but a great deal of subtle thoughts. It's uh, not necessary for us in this situation to... Um, to seek to block these thoughts or to cut these thoughts, simply being aware that these, uh, this movement of thoughts is in fact mind itself and knowing this and resting in this state, the thoughts will subside of their own accord. <laughs> Then the <laughs> So regardless of what is happening in respect of our thought movement, whether we're giving a rise to thoughts or whether the thoughts are ceasing, it's, uh, um, we simply remain experientially aware of what is taking place without actually discursively trying to understand or label what is taking place in respect of our thoughts. Uh, this is similar to watching people walking back and forth in front of our vision, our eyes watching and being aware of what is taking place, but our mind not thinking. So our mind seeing a person walking back or walking forth, but our mind not thinking, oh, there's a person walking for, walking this way, there's a person walking that way. Ultimately, our, this would be a situation of our eyes being aware of the movement, but our um, minds not discursively processing what is taking place. So in a similar way, um, we uh, maintain an experiential awareness of whether our thoughts are arising or whether they are uh, ceasing. We don't uh, discursively analyze whether they are arising or ceasing. We just um, maintain an awareness that is experiential in nature. <laughs> So uh, this kind of uh, experiential awareness, uh, where, the, where our mind is um, experientially aware of our thoughts, regardless of the way that they are moving, is what we refer to as the self-settled mind. 
jamni denim, deni samlu matan, samlu taning and not toke undu mundu, deni drogo undu mundu, deni masam, or samlu tamcher, deni namto tamcher, mar jerni, deni dupi neck of neck of na, deni gate, nam toke mena, deni nam toke mundu, somebody quarrel and yams and yon jokore, deni nam toke yona, nam toke song, somebody yams and yongore, in now. They seem quarrel and yams and yongore, Mato Bayang, as on Namto Jamba Chikuyang, or the Jig and the Gak and the Dimaris. So by uh, resting in this state, um, giving rise to no uh, discursive thought, we uh, directly experience the state of our mind. So if we, uh, we give rise to thought, we um, experience that we are giving rise to thought. If a thought ceases, we experience that a thought has uh, ceased. We don't discursively uh, label or discursively um, uh, discursively address the arising or the ceasing of our thoughts, or rather use um, thoughts, uh, discursive thought to label other discursive thought. Uh, so we can rest um, with our mind in this state or we can, as we um, spoke about before, um, re- I think, Ya <laughs> So, regardless of the way that we rest our minds, whether we rest our minds at the point of the center of our heart or whether we bring them to rest at point zero, which is similar to the uh, formless approach in the Shamata methods in the Book of the Dead, the important thing is that we rest our minds in a still state and allow our thoughts to become less and less. Nam <laughs> Rangwabdimchonitsitangatsunamtoti so the um, verse beginning conceptual thoughts moving don't lead to improvement. 
uh, in this verse, uh, we're really looking at the fact that uh, the thoughts that uh, arise in our mind take place in an no in a no ending ever continuing stream, and yet they have no meaning whatsoever, and ultimately they don't enable us to. Uh, engage in any kind of uh, meaningful action, um, despite the fact that uh, based on these thoughts, we have been living our lives up until this point. This point, These thoughts themselves haven't um, enabled us to accomplish any great meaning. However, from this point on, um, through practicing shamatha meditation and enabling ourselves to train our minds, then we will uh, be in a position to begin to uh, engage in work of a meaningful type. Dirt <laughs> Simla Mupa and Dertavi, Nanta Yanta, Japana, Tanzan Lis Ruana, Casamipa near the Nitz, Tering Ato, Aya, Janegatini, the Matuku Parta, Tang, Aranga Sumbashi go and do, Sambagatini, Simta Jenny, then he gum goes. Then he gum nanga to the Nicale, Caletini, or Lung Samchipotini, Romagnala, do resit, or Lung Romagnala and the Gitting at Nakanala, the Mambusia can do. Gantarante, so time to put a loss of Hojonche go re, Mato Bandit, Hola, Shitam Kumaritina, Dorna, not so tenu long, Romagan Landini, Namto Chichon, Chichon Landore, Tesichi. Then he not so tar in the Tabshindo, then a Halipa Labore, then Lama, then a Lamitini, Manga, Jamba, Tinjigo, Mandina La Saru, Shavjore, then Manga Jam, Manga Dawata, Gumta, Tinj, Jamba, Mena. Then in Din Yigin Dinala Yopata Yapo, she need any gumna, then it tea, tangents and tin it a tobyungre. So um going on with the text until we have uh, accomplished good results in our shamatha uh, meditation practice we need to be diligent in respect of our meditation goals to diligently work towards um, good accomplishment in our shamatha meditation practice um, in the verse uh, uh, on the top of page five um, by gaining familiarization, by doing it over and over, the winds will gather into the heart center, entering the central channel, and the discursive thoughts will become more calm and the mind will become more and more pliant. This, the winds gathering into the heart's center, this is something that is spoken of a great deal in the in Vajrayana meditation um, teachings. However, this is something that we would need to study separately um, in order to gain a comprehensive understanding of. The important thing here is that um, through the wind gathering into our heart center, our thoughts become more calm and our minds become more restful. And um, going on from this to the uh, next verse, the um, this um, advice or these instructions in this very text are extremely simple. They're extremely clear. And in fact, by putting into place, by applying uh, these instructions in this text, we will be able to uh, bring the mind to rest. And, in, and it is not necessary for us to receive any instructions or any particularly any particular complicated instructions from a teacher, etc. Simply um, practicing on the instructions and advice in this text will be sufficient for us to attain very good results in shamatha practice. Then in the Lit Labore, then is the Latin Gumna, then is Sim Martin, Niguna, then is Ni Laboyens. So, what it's saying is that uh, this meditation method is very easy by putting into place these instructions, it's very easy for us to bring our mind to rest. Then if Shirtan Lazo Gum Yamna, then is Gumtit in Lama, then is Gumden Yapo, Lama Yamun Yunkin. Then you come to the Yapo Tobgo, Rema Toba Shirtan, Tinning as a gum tiso young, Sosola Manga Menkentata, Tinny Yapositini Machina, Gum Tinishi Dena, 
So usually when we talk about receiving instructions for meditation practice, we say that it's necessary to have a good teacher, to rely on a good teacher who is very familiar with the meditation practices and is able to provide us with um, qualified uh, pointing out instructions. The reason being that if we were to rely on someone who was not familiar and was not experienced, um, that the instructions they might give us could potentially harm us, such as um, lead to a situation where we might become crazy. Um, it would be similar to a situation where um, we take all kinds of random medicines and ingest these in our body. It, we would uh, likely become sick through this approach. Um, and this uh, word of caution is exp especially so in relation to meditation on the winds, channels and drops. Uh, by not proceeding properly, it's possible that we could um, sustain significant harm. In the world today, um, all kinds of uh, meditation methods and techniques are spreading wide, widely. We've got yoga, we've got other kinds of meditation techniques that have been newly invented. And uh, in respect of um, these meditation methods, it's necessary that we proceed with caution, not knowing necessarily how things might end up. In any case, whatever kind of uh, meditation practice it is that we elect to um, elect to practice, it's necessary that we first establish with certainty that the meditation method is in fact a reliable one. And uh, if we're not able to do this, it's, um, it's uncertain what might um, take place uh, through practicing a uh, meditation method that is not a reliable one. It's possible that we uh, may be uh, mentally harmed. <laughs> However, the meditation method that's outlined in this text is an extremely clear one. It's an extremely simple one, and there is no danger at all in um, practicing it. So for the purposes of this meditation, there is uh, no need for other kinds of um, approaches um, that exist in other kinds of Adriana practices, such as practices entailing uh, meditations on heart drops or different colors or letters or syllables or wind retention, none of this is necessary. Despite the fact that it's a very convenient, it's a very easy uh, or straightforward meditation practice, um, there is no uh, pith. In it is very profound in nature, and there is uh, no uh, pith instruction that is, in fact, more profound than this one. Uh, this is, as it says in the text. <laughs> So 
So from this is the end of the teaching on shamatha meditation and uh, what goes on from here is um, uh, teaching on flakbong, on oh, so on the uh, profound insight. Tambor Seoni, Gernina, Simji Simlar Tibana, Nam Kirtation of Tibana, Tumingu, Ngubur Momutar, Stagan Stangan Kilni, Jornina, Stonsal Zonjik, Simji, some chunit on Nalan Chara Yenzita, Tambonga to Simti Yaboz, the Gumjam Nimara Nigo, the La Jernese. Then you need Sari Gisit in the Namtomambo mate in Yaboz, and Nate Sari Gini, the Ninga to Simka Simla, Tayona. The new one is the new one. 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 The new one is the observe the mind or to experience, uh, to have the mind experience itself, it is possible for us to um, really or truly observe point zero or to realize emptiness or understand our Buddha nature. (laughs) Zobachin bought it in it, Lama Gipishin Latini, the Niti Tola Jernet in Shitari Gini, the Nit Zobachin bought in Rupat in Togonat in it, Ted Laboyore, the Nit Jernet, Mangere, Mangiti Tola, the Nit Zorchin Gumnat in it, Zorchin Tondore, the Nit Zorchin Tobati, the Nit Lama, the Nit Shinlupton Dambatini, Lama Gipa, Shinlupion, and the Nit Gumdeni, the Nit Zobachin Bojagore, the Nit Zorchin Tondore. So upon a foundation, a firm foundation of um, shamatha meditation with the um, guidance of a qualified teacher, it will be uh, relatively uh, more um, easy for us to uh, realize the meaning of the great completion or to achieve realization um, according to the uh, Dzogchen teaching. So in this situation, it would be necessary for us to have a qualified lama and the blessings of our lama, the blessings of our lama's lineage, um, uh, and upon our foundation of shamatha um, practice, um, further um, profound insight practice and Dzogchen practice will accomplish results um, more with more greater ease. Mr. Da, Tambuzi, Dr. Gontan La Mapembe Tipa Gateni, Gomtov Dutini, C. Sombarezina, the name at the young Maratini, the Lamam, Halipagatini, Lamam, Kipa Yimba, the need trip to Yimba, the Gumba Haliba, Yam Yung Yapoyon King, the Tini Lama, Janshus and Watani, Jamgun Mopam, they are Tinis Yoritini, T. Sombarez. And then finally, uh, we see that this. Um, uh, teaching was written by uh, Lama Mipam on the sixth day of the first month of the fire horse year during the afternoon break between sessions. So uh, Lama Mipam, of course, was um, a brilliant adept, medita- a meditative adept, a scholar, a uh, bodhisattva in the Nyingma tradition of Tibetan Buddhism. <laughs> Keran so in Nateni, Katsan, Teran, Solatini, Gum Gabgundu, Tenit, Teran, Sanyan, Katsakamundu, Namgini Antenni, Gum Gabgundu, Tenit, Chen, Nambalantini, Gum Trunkantini, Tenit, Lama, Yori, Tenit, Rumbochi, Nami, Nateni, Chen, Namla, Tarna, and Duyan, Natsu Teran Shaki, and Mambotini, Chatsandu, Tenit, in the Tama, the Korkupe, Yabore, Tenangatso, Soso Latini, Lama, the Tenit, or Soso, or Trungla, Tenit Trunkin Yona. Then he are ye upon, draw it, then he cork up the pay up for it, then not cork up damson shinny, then he so so still same ganala, then he tangin zena, journey zena, tez a kim kitani, baba tez she at the pay, carchim bore it. So uh, this um, brings to a conclusion our teaching on the shamata component of the teachings. 
um, in you, all of you have been um, practicing meditation yesterday, today, you'll continue to do it tomorrow. In general, you have been practicing meditation anyway and will continue to do so under the guidance of your own teacher. And this is really a wonderful opportunity that you have in your midst a qualified teacher who's able to guide you in your meditation practice. So everyone should seize this opportunity and really strive to see whether um, you're able to uh, accomplish good results in your shamatha meditation practice, whether you can achieve a uh, good, uh, good results in your efforts towards meditative concentration. So that you've um, all been uh, medita meditating together and meditating under the guidance of your teacher as well as meditating together, this is a really uh, wonderful thing, gaining familiarity um, uh, about meditation in this way, and this is something that will really um, uh, bring you great benefit. So everybody, please do continue to be uh, diligent in your efforts. So uh, that brings to a conclusion our teaching on shamatha meditation. Thank you very much to everyone.
Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>